On the other hand, see this as all about spending, not enough about reducing the deficit, not about paying down debt. So there is that clash we will see unfold over the next several days. How are they paying down debt, increasing the budget, incre- putting more money, putting us more in debt? Like, I, that doesn't make sense. There's too much spending still, and whether enough pe- attention is being paid to retiring uh, the debt and to paying down some of the, the accumulated debt that's been put in here by Christy Fleet in the past years to deal with the, uh, the pandemic. Chris, that is the state of affairs, the state of play, this budget as of today. But what are the risks that could derail this plan? A couple of economists, including former parliamentary budget officer Kevin Page, pointed out that some of the economic assumptions that uh, Freeland and her department are making are really out of date for two reasons. One is the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, It is really potentially triggering a recession uh, in Europe that could have an impact on Canada, but also inflation, Jennifer. Inflation, even the, the government officials we talked to yesterday uh, suggested that inflation, high inflation, six, seven, eight percent could be with us well into next year. So that could change the profile for this budget. Uh, a lot of people worry, too, that there is no contingency fund, no rainy day fund in case another surprise comes. And certainly we've had enough of those over the last five years to, to prepare for the unexpected. So we'll hear a bit about that, too, about whether or not the assumptions that uh, Christy Freeland is making uh, in include the possibility that what she is forecasting may be hit broad or broadsided by another world event that uh, we just can't just anticipate at this point. Chris, thank you as always for making sense of it all for us. Chris Hawley, not a right, Thanks, Jennifer. All right, yeah, so this is just fucking crazy. Ugh, these people are insane. Batman's a mega capitalist. He'd be the farthest thing from a communist in the whole world. <clears throat> well, actually, he kind of would be a communist because they they prioritize getting themselves rich, and then they assure you that they'll <laughs> they'll save everyone else. But it never happens. Just like how Batman will never exist, and he doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter when the budgets balance themselves. Yeah, this will not help them. It's not supposed to. Yeah, right. Oh my god. Let's see what this guy says on the internet. Yeah, like subscriber. Subscriptions. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Food review, bruh. Yeah, this guy's autistic. Foodie pie. Foodie pie. What the fuck? And BBC. Oh my god. Mr. Beast. Bruh. Bruh. Right, enough said. You're like 12 or autistic. Anyway, not that autism is bad, but I mean. Do they let the severely mentally disabled pe- people vote? I'm not saying that that's what autism Anyway, I'm burying myself here in a hole. No. Um, our government is absolutely, our government is absolutely corrupt and, and useless. And we need to vote them out and get useful politicians and i don't understand how half the population thinks that the liberals are like that they're helping anyone they're they're raising the price of everything they're sinking money in all these programs like do you understand like how is sinking money into these public into dental pharma and public housing and now it's not like they're you know what? They make it sound like they're going to be buying people houses or they're going to be building the ho- houses that are going to be significantly cheaper than now. How are they going to... They're going to build th- minimum $300,000 homes and they're going to sell them for less? Is that what you're saying? No. They're going to build a bunch of fucking apartment buildings and duplexes. They're going to pay off their construction company buddies and their fucking real- realty buddies. Right? And then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be paying rent in these places. You're never gonna own them. No one's ever gonna own these places except for the corporate construction companies and, and real realtor companies. Well, the, the construction companies are gonna benefit from it, and the realtor companies are gonna be the ones that own it, the, the big guys. So they're not helping the Canadian people whatsoever. Yeah, you're 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 creating maybe affordable housing as in cheap rent for people, but you're not helping the Canadian people get established or get into a position where they can purchase their own home. You know what I mean? Maybe by making affordable rental housing, but they will they won't acknowledge the fact that their affordable housing is only going to help those who rent. Those who wish to own property and wish to own a home, 
are completely ignored and their struggle is in fact being amplified tenfold. And they will not acknowledge that. They only acknowledge the fact that, oh, hey, well, we're helping all the people that don't have houses. We're helping all those homeless bums that are in the middle of Toronto and uh, we're helping them get housing so that, um, right, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't help anyone but the poor people who aren't contributing to society. You know, the poor bums that spend all their money on drugs and s fucking loafed around in downtown and do literally dick all and spend all, and they're pretty much fucking dead already. They're walking dead. Yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna spend uh, billions of dollars on them and it's gonna, it's gonna help the economy more than if conservatives came in and shut down all of our spending and put all the money that we're taking and putting it and putting all that money and shit and the money we're giving to construction companies and under these programs that aren't working and putting them back into the economy. That's not gonna, they're gonna cut all our programs that were, where we're spend, overspending money and it's not accomplishing anything and they're gonna put that into the government and that's not gonna, they're gonna put that back into the economy and back into the people and that's not gonna lower the prices, right? Conservatives, shutting down all these fucking liberal programs and liberal spending that's clearly rising inflation and putting us in this position right now. Stopping those programs and putting and allocating the money into functioning programs or into the Canadian people as a whole isn't gonna help, right? No. We, what we need to do is we need to keep promoting these divisive uh, leftist uh, talking points and we need to keep this is going to help Canada as a whole what we need to do is we need to marginalize white people and make white people s uh, feel bad and then we need to prop up the uh, African Americans and oh yeah natives too we'll worry about natives later but black lives is what matters really uh, you know indigenous people we're, we're taking care of their dead kids we don't have to worry about the fact that you know they still don't have running water actually we will make a fund you, uh, they have to contact us and we'll give them money but we won't go out and actually you know repair the reserves like we said we would because uh, it turns out we can't uh, the other thing is, that's a thing, by the way, that the liberals promised to get running water to most of the reserves and that, that never happened. It still didn't happen. What they did was they created a fund where the natives have to call the, the government to get money to pay for their generations of lack of clean water. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fucking stupid. Whoever the left is supporting, the, whoever's supporting this government, you're supporting, you're buying you're paying the people that are going to kill you and starve you. You're paying them. You're, um, you're, you're supporting and encouraging the people that are starving and killing you and making your life worse right now. Imagine. Even if, you, even if the conservatives were the same side of a different coin, if Pierre gets elected pres, uh, prime minister, the only, all he's been doing is promising transparency. He's already buried himself. If he, go, if he gets the position and he isn't 100% transparent and he doesn't fix the economy, he's already done. Right? Why keep giving the current government that fucks up every single second that is clearly corrupt, that is clearly non-transparent, another chance? Why? Why is there not any type of legal action that we can take as Canadians to get these corrupt, absolutely corrupt, self-interested politicians out of fucking parliament? How? How do we do it? 